Hey there. So YouTube is at it again, and in an effort to make our digital overlords happy, I have re-edited our most recent episode into two videos, one that is a primer on plant nutrition, and then this video, which goes over what products I use and how I feed my plants and veg. As always, this information is for medical educational purposes, I am not diagnosing or treating any condition you may have, and please know and comply with all applicable laws wherever you may live. I'm Dr. Judd with Green Cert MD, and let's get into it. So there is an incredible number of nutrient lines on the market, each with various base solutions, additives, boosters, and secret squirrel special sauce to make your grow the bestest best of the best. Now, I can't tell you how much of the hype on any given product is just marketing, and my simple recommendations would be to check out a few product line websites, read about the products, check out some online reviews from sources you trust, and consult the friendly people at your local grow shop. If you're here in St. Louis, check out Discount Indoor Growing, Grow Generation, or Grow Active Solutions, as they all carry quality products available at price ranges to meet any budget. My previous growing experience was with Heavy 16's Nutrient Line, and I was quite happy with it. I used the entire product line at the recommended dosages in their feed chart, and frankly, I got amazing results. However, sometimes life intervenes, and after a flooded basement wiped out my entire grow along with all of my growing equipment and nutrients a few years ago, I found myself starting out all over again, and by that time, my local shop had discontinued carrying Heavy 16 because it was one of the more expensive lines out there, and they just weren't moving enough of it to justify keeping it on the shelves. So I switched to House and Gardens line, both because it was available locally, and also I had had the opportunity to meet some of the fine people associated with the products, and it has turned out to be a good decision. The product lines are overall very similar, House and Garden consists of two base nutrient solutions, along with additional products to cover various needs at certain stages throughout your grow. I'm not gonna go into a complete review of their entire product line here, but if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment below and we'll try to make that happen. House and Garden have different product lines for soil, cocoa, and hydroponics, and I'm using the complete soil product line. They provide a feeding chart for both eight and 10 week flowering grows, though I tend to just stick to the 10-week regimen. And to clarify, the length of the regimen refers to the length of time the plant is in flower, not including the vegetative period. More on this later in the video. I have found the recommended dosing guidelines to work out well, and I haven't had any issues which I can state are the fault of the nutrient line, as any problems I have encountered with my plants since I switched were traced back to user error i.e. mistakes I made, like the time I forgot to pH balance an entire week's worth of feedings I mixed up for the plants to be given while I was out of town. That messed with the pH of those plants and resulted in a nutrient lockout, which is something we will cover in an upcoming video. Luckily, those plants were in the early vegetative phase and they recovered well once I got them back on track. So in our watering video, we went over how and when I water my plants, link here. But just to recap, I tend to aim for every other day feeding slash waterings using reverse osmosis water with a nutrient solution added. Initially, once our seeds had germinated and were placed into four inch round containers, we were using a solution that contained 40 milliliters of Clonex solution that was pH balanced to around 6.2. During the two to three weeks or so that my plants are in their four inch containers, I will transition them from the Clonex that we started on to the house and garden line. And I use the emergence of about the third or fourth node on the main stem as a general guide as to when to start that. I will start using the seedling stage dose of house and garden for one week, pH balance to between 5.8 and 6.2, I will then move up to the vegetative stage week one dosing and run that for a week. After that, I will move up to the full vegetative stage dosing labeled week two on the feeding chart, again balanced to around 6.2. This occurs at the same time that I am moving the plants from a 24 hours on light cycle to an 18 on 16 off cycle. And once my plants are in their one gallon containers, I will continue that week two feeding regimen. I did want to point out, however, that when I watered my one gallon plants after transplanting them with the solution containing mycorrhizae as we went over in the last video, I didn't actually use any nutrients 
in that gallon. I just used ph water with the mycorrhizae, and that watering usually lasts for about three to four days as the plants recover from the transplanting process before they need more water. After that time has lapsed, I resume my week two nutrient dosing, and I do that by starting out with half strength for that first watering, then I increase it to full strength thereafter. One thing virtually all of these companies do is create feeding charts that look to the new grower like the vegetative phase is only two weeks long. Well, I guess you could immediately flip a super small plant, but since we all want a lot of product to harvest, it's in our best interest to extend that out for a while. They all intend for you to continue the week two dosing regimen for the rest of that vegetative phase, however long you would like that to be. I would recommend a minimum of about four weeks on week two speeding regimen, with the general guide being to keep the plants in the vegetative phase until they reach a height of approximately one half of what you desire the end height to be at harvest. This length of time will of course vary, and plants could theoretically be kept in the vegetative phase indefinitely. When I'm ready to flip my plants into flower, I will perform a flush before moving on to the prescribed flowering phase feeding regimen, and we will revisit this as our grow progresses. So today's pro tip for the new grower is to not get overwhelmed with all of the nutrient options out there. There's a joke in the cannabis industry that every bottle of every nutrient line generally contains just nitrogen and soluble potash, and this can make it hard to compare products. Well, this is the result of the way these products have to be labeled here in the US, and these labels don't truly represent what the product is going to do for you. So I would recommend just picking a nutrient company, whether Athena, General Hydroponics, Floriflex, Fox Farms, or as in my case, House and Garden, and stick to that one company's product line for that entire first grow. You will eventually add things here and there for your specific situation, but for now, pick a line you've heard good things about that is in your price range and give it a try. Also, keep in mind that sometimes these feeding charts will be oriented towards an aggressive feeding regimen with rapid plant growth anticipated, meaning they can at times provide more nutrients than your plants need or actually can use, resulting in overfeeding and nutrient burn. These dosing regimens can be modified, and we will be addressing how to use your EC meter to check runoff to help you really dial in the nutrient feedings for your plants in an upcoming video. So there you go. We've packed a ton of information into this video. We've just barely scratched the surface on the art of feeding cannabis, and we haven't even addressed feeding in the flowering phase. Growing cannabis is truly a journey, and whether this is your first grow or 15th, there's always something new to learn, a different method to explore, and every grower I know strives to up their game with new skills and more knowledge with every successive grow. If you found this video helpful, drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll have access to our growing experts to help address any issues you may have, link in the description below. So that's it for now, and until I see you again, puff puff and pass it on.